Good evening, I'm Bob Bag of Donuts. Here at KTMA, we don't do the news. That's why we're taking this time to bring you hearsay, innuendo, and sheer conjecture. We call it 15 Minutes. And tonight's story is a tale of paranoia, deception, and intrigue entitled, Oh, Those Martians. It has been said by many a government bureaucrat that the best way to hide something is to put it in plain sight. Well, that's exactly what the United States government has been doing for over 50 years. You see, 15 Minutes has discovered a new secret military installation. And no, it's not in the Nevada desert, and no, it's not in some remote third world country. It's right here in urban America, and you're looking right at it. This story begins in 1938, when Orson Welles made his historic radio broadcast of H.G. Wells' War of the Worlds. The program was a sensation. Many people believed what they heard. Earth was being invaded by Martians and time was running out. The incident prompted federal legislation mandating proper identification for dramatic material in all future broadcasts. And so the case of the Martians invading Earth was closed. Or was it? If anyone on this planet knows about Martians, it's Mrs. Lars Svensson. For 17 years, her husband, Lars, was an employee of a top secret branch of the Department of Bureau Affairs in Washington. The code name was Circus Peanut. Circus Peanut? Circus Peanut. You mean like those little Cir marshmallow candy? Yes, gooey circus. peanuts. Mm -hmm. Circus Peanut. Yes, the candy. That's... Project Circus Peanut. Yes, yes. Okay. And what was its official classification? Its official classification was the Martian Defense Bureau Administration. As fantastic as it may sound, Mrs. Svensson has a stack of memos to back oh, up yes. her claim. Here's one, Mr. Bagadonis. May I call you Mr. Bagadonis? I certainly. Okay. This is from the Department of Bureaus. It's a gag memo from Lars' boss, Leland Jenke, Assistant Administrator, United States Department of Bureaus, and I quote, I hereby order you to desist inquiring, writing, or speaking any further about anything regarding Martians, secret Martian defense installations, Project Circus Peanut, or anything else. Lars, we've been through this over and over again. Just do your job. The memo was dated November 20th, 1968, exactly 30 years and one month after the original War of the Worlds radio broadcast. And this is only the beginning. <laughs> Ours used to record all their conversations. That's Bob Tarkle, sir? That's Curly McDuck. What you are hearing is a coded conversation between two high-ranking members of the Bureau of Administration Departments and the Department of Bureau Offices. They're speaking in a thinly veiled code. was the control code for the development of chemical weapons, and Anthony Earle was an operative in Camden, New Jersey. We did some digging of our own here at the Minneapolis Public Library. We did some digging of our own here at the Minneapolis Public Library. The library provided reams of clear-cut evidence to establish a link between the Martian Defense Bureau of Administration and the Office of Bureaus, itself a little-known branch of the Bureau of Offices. It seems that funding traveled from the Office of Administration to the Office of Interbureau Affairs. From there, it trickled down through the Outer Office Comptroller of the Interbureau Affairs Office to the Office of Bureaus. Arriving late and tired, the money spent the night in the lobby of the Office of Administrations before catching a late morning run to the Office of Bureaus. There, it was secretly laundered to the Martian Defense Bureau of Administration and hung out to dry. Armed with the evidence, we made our way here to the head office of the MDBA, which uses as a front the Minneapolis District Bowling Association. 
I don't know what you're talking about. I don't know why you're here. We're a bowling association. Donovan Smelter is the alleged head of the MDBA. And while we were there, he would not confirm one bit of information. So you're going to deny everything? Deny? There's nothing to deny. What about the name Lars Svensson? Means nothing to me. If he doesn't bowl, I probably don't know him. All right. Well, maybe this list of irrefutable evidence will jog your memory. Memory of what? MDBA. That's our initials, Minneapolis District Bowling Association. OK, fair enough. What's your association with Orson Welles? None. He's some fat dead guy, isn't he? When did you last work for the Department of Bureaus, the DOB? Look, mister, I'm a steam fitter, local 107. The Bureau of Department Administration, what did you do for them? Look, I might have this memo some duct dated 1938 slash 234567/d/302 is this stat update. We might have given up here where this trail ended. Sad, confused, defeated, humiliated, disillusioned. We might have just thrown in the towel, tossed away the clipboard, just given up, gone home to our families, our children taken up macrame, finished those little odd jobs around the house that never seemed to get done. We might have given up television journalism altogether, taken up a career in court reporting, but we didn't. We decided to go back to the house of Mrs. Fenson just one more time. I'll have you know I could be risking my life to be showing you these. These are sketches of deadly devices actually deployed by the MDBA. Lars Svensson stole these sketches from the Department of Bureau Administration. Project code name, Circus Peanut. Target area, the Twin Cities. Devices with names like Shinbuster, Bouncing Connie, and Orson's Thumb. And on each of the sketches, the signature of the man who drew them, Curly McDuff. Listen, number 14, you want to bowl out in the alley, you just keep that kind of crap up. I'll have you out of here in seconds flat. Curly McDuff worked on MDBA until he was released for mental instability. He is now the manager of the Mermaid Bowling Alley. This is top secret, you know. That's right. <laughs> well, I'll be God dang. Yeah? Yeah, that's my signature out there. There's Why no don't doubt about that. explain this device to us? The River Kwai Special. You know, uh, uh, a Martian, of course, is extremely attracted to canals. You know, they got them there back where they come from. And, uh, of course, they got bridges. They, they see a bridge, they go, they go nuts. They, what they do, they just start down on one end of the bridge, come right across the top. The bridge, of course, here in the, is not a full bridge. They fall right off the end, fall down on the rocks or whatever we put below. Of course, uh, Phil Myers thought to uh, <laughs> put broken glass down here. <laughs> well, the, that finishes him off. The Martians are deceived in believing this is an actual bridge. Exactly. They, they run and they plummet <laughs> exactly. off the end into Exa rocks or broken yeah, glass. Exactly. It's beautiful, isn't it? Fanciful ravings of some crackpot? Then explain this. A River Kwai special here in downtown Minneapolis. And there's more. McDuff's Lucifer's Elbow actually deployed near a busy suburban street. The Plankington Mine, fully armed and dangerous, tucked away here in a quiet Minneapolis neighborhood. And how about the bouncing Connie and its menacing shinbuster charge? It's right here in plain sight. We see them every day, high atop skyscrapers, in neighborhoods, still armed, still lethal, and until this day, still hidden from the public. And just how dangerous are they? Ask Mrs. Svensson. Who killed your husband? The government killed my husband. They murdered him sucked every last breath from his body. They blew him apart. They threw him to the dogs. They gobbled him up. Squished his soul. Squished his soul. 86 him. Uh, 86 him. Hasta luego, buckwheat. <laughs> On October 19th of this year, Lars Svensson mysteriously died. According to Mrs. Svensson, his death was caused by a Martian defense device. We wanted to bring it out in the open. That's why we did it. We wanted to clear the air, open the windows, oh, shed a new light on things. Unlock the doors, open the floodgates. Yes. Lift the bolts. Right the leaves. Raise high the roof, the roof beams. Open eyes. Turn on the lights. Clean the water. Clean the wax out of the ears. Oh, yes. That night, the Svensons were on their way to Wednesday night league bowling. 
they stopped here when Lars demanded to inspect this skinny boy device. It was dark. Lars made the fatal mistake of using his lighter to inspect a valve and... He must have shot up 60 feet. Oh, it was messy. Mm. When he came down, he looked like a, a burnt pork chop. No. A roasted ham. No, a burnt pork chop. That was him all over. Oh, I'm still trying to pick up the pieces of my life. And helping her to pick up the pieces, attorney for Mrs. Svensson, Lyle Rood. We are suing the government of the United States for gross negligence in the public safety. We're suing for 100 million plus fees. The client has been gravely wronged. This won't bring her husband back, but it'll try to make it a lot easier. <laughs> the snow is flying here at Deep Haven Cemetery, as are all the unanswered questions. How many defense installations are there and where? Why has the government refused to talk to us? If the Martians are here on Earth, where are they? And do they pay taxes? And what about the bowling connection? Lars Svensson could have answered all these questions, but he's dead. And the Martian defense system? It lives on. It still exists, hiding all around us in plain sight. <clears throat> this is Bob. Bob has a great job. He owns a BMW. He has a four-bedroom house in a fashionable part of town. His wife is a successful litigation attorney. He's been addicted to cocaine and through a treatment program. His kids go to a Montessori daycare center. And yet, Bob is unhappy. Won't you contribute generously to the Upscale Professional Relief Fund? For only $7,000 a month, Bob can have more of what he needs. A second home, a cabin cruiser on Lake Minnetonka, another Volvo, a Mercedes-Benz station wagon, an aeroplane, a gold... Won't you help me, please? Give generously to the Upscale Professional Relief Fund. An ego is a terrible thing to waste. Concerning last week's story on linoleum floors, we reached into our mailbag and found a stack of letters, including this one. Kudos to 15 Minutes. Your story reminded me of a basketball I used to own. Have you seen it? I'd really like it back. This viewer wrote, while we applaud the efforts of your team to uncover the floor industry, what was glaringly missing was any mention of hardwood floors. What about them, huh? We won't let you walk over us this way. When you gentlemen sweep things under your rugs, they probably end up on a hardwood floor. And finally, this from a credit bureau in Blaine. We still have not received your payment due last month. This is undoubtedly an oversight on your part. We're sure you want to protect your good credit rating by attending to this matter immediately. I'm Bob Bagadonuts. We'll be back next time with more stories on 15 Minutes. Come into this uh, gamma field, disrupt the, uh, the uh, waves in the gamma field, and of course a shin buster charge, uh, called for obvious reason, that'll detonate and, uh, <laughs> well, you get some results uh, roughly uh, parallel to what you see down at the bottom here. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, these are fantastic. I haven't seen these in uh, 15, 20 years. But Lucifer's elbow. Yeah, 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 yeah. I ain't a gas bottle principal, you know.